On Tech News Today, Google's working on an ultra-high-speed alternative to fiber, and it's wireless. Plus, CBS announces a video-on-demand service, and Facebook lets you reassure family and friends during a disaster. All that and more coming up right now on Tech News Today. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Thursday, October 16th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Prosper. Prosper is a peer to peer lending marketplace that connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Visa prepaid card when you get a loan. And buy Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TNT. Tech News Today is the show where we talk about the tech news with the journalists who report it. Welcome to the show. I'm Mike Elgin. Jason Howell, how badly do you want a Nexus 6? Uh, the more I think about it, the more I want one. I'm, I'm actually seriously considering what I have uh, that I can sell so that I can buy one. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect for people like you who are yes. six, eight. Well, I, you know, not too long ago, I spent time with the Huawei Ascend Mate 2 and it's a six inch device. And I think it, as far as the, the dimensions are concerned, it's slightly larger, like a, just a hair larger than the Nexus 6. And I was cool with that. It actually worked for me, but you know, I've got, I'm, I'm a tall, huge dude. So there you go. It's not going to work for everybody. You need a tall, huge phone. Yeah, apparently. And Elise Hugh, it is Thursday, and welcome to you, our co-anchor for Thursday. So glad you're here. Glad to be here, Mike. I know we have a lot to get through, so I won't do my typical jawboning today. <laughs> you're always welcome to. Uh, now, we have a big <laughs> Apple announcement. Are you excited? Can you feel it? I'm, I'm not feeling a whole lot, but I'm sure you are going to be able to sort of stoke my excitement, Mike. Uh, I'll do what That's I can. That's how talented you are. Uh, thank you so much. I, I'll do what I can. I think the theme of this will, will be, does the iPad still have a reason to exist? So good luck to Apple for uh, making that case. You can turn tune in right after this show to live.twit.tv for our special coverage with me, Leo, Sarah, and a special guest. So make sure you stick around after this show. Let's jump into the news. Google is working on new technology that could be the wireless version of its high-speed fiber service. The project was revealed in regulatory filing paperwork and in a heavily redacted application on Monday to the FCC, Google asked permission to test different wireless spectrums, including a millimeter wave frequency technology that could theoretically transmit huge amounts of data at several gigabits per second. Alexei Oreskovic is a reporter for Reuters and joins us now. Welcome to you, Alexei. Thanks. Good to be here. Now, what's so great about millimeter wave frequency wireless? Well, what's interesting about uh, the millimeter uh, wave bands and what it, and which uh, caught our eye is that it's a it's a, a a band that's not really used much right now. It's something that the FCC is is interested in uh, looking into to get more people to use it. In fact, there's going to be a public hearing on it uh, just this Friday about uh, the potential to use it. Um, and the reason why it's really interesting for companies like Google is that it it has the capability to transmit a lot of data uh, across it at high speed. Speeds. Uh, one of the uh, one of the folks we spoke to said it's the closest thing to fiber in the wireless radio world. Um, so it can uh, it can really uh, you know enable a lot of the kind of uh, modern uh, web streaming type of apps that uh, that people are used to today. Um, the downside is that it only works for um, short distances. After that, the signal starts to degrade. So um, you have to have a lot of uh, kind of equipment nearby to uh, to make this uh, work. So, Alexi, um, because this doesn't work super long range, what does that mean for the way that Google might um, deploy it or be able to use it or not use it um, pending FCC approval, of course? Right. Well, that's uh, kind of what's so intriguing about this application. Um, they, uh, they, they have a little diagram where they've mentioned uh, multiple fixed locations where they're doing this test. Um, two of the locations are on actually buildings on the Google campus and they're about a half mile apart. And those are the two locations that use the, uh, some of the millimeter wave uh, equipment. And then there's another location about 10 miles away using different frequencies. But so the two nearby uh, kind of uh, suggest that maybe Google is trying to test ways to you know, to see how uh, the signals would work if you were to put uh, multiple uh, 
millimeter wave uh, equipment on different buildings to do kind of those short hops. And that could uh, potentially be something that was very useful in fiber. In fact, it is the uh, the head of the Google fiber effort. Um, Craig Barrett is the guy whose name is signed off on this. So that kind of is another clue that maybe they're looking uh, to uh, use this as a replacement or an extension to their uh, fiber system. Alexia Reskovic is at Reuters.com, and you can follow him on Twitter at LexNFX. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All right. Just a sec. We have another, uh, another entrant into the world of uh, video on demand. But first, I want to tell you about Prosper. What could you do with $35,000? Imagine what you could do. You could start a business. You could pay off your debt. You could remodel your kitchen. Whatever you like, you could have it in 72 hours with Prosper. You pay off high credit cards. You know, I and mean, so many things you could do. Fill out an easy online application, provide a few details, and you can see your rate almost instantly. And the thing to know is that you can check your rate without affecting your credit score, so there's no reason to not do it. Prosper offers low fixed rates, unsecured personal loans, no collateral required, and has multi-year terms available. Prosper has more than 2 million members and over a billion dollars in funded loans. This is just a fantastic service. You know, everybody complains about the banking system and predatory loans. Now it's your chance to do something about it with Prosper. This is Silicon Valley's answer to personal loans. For a limited time, Prosper is offering uh, Twit viewers and listeners a $50 Visa prepaid card when you get a loan. Just go to prosper.com slash Twit. And that's a special site just for our viewers and listeners. Up to $35,000 in just three days and a $50 Visa prepaid card. Go to prosper.com slash Twit. Twit. Well, yesterday we told you that HBO plans to start selling a digital online subscription package that doesn't require a pay TV subscription. Elise, it looks like they're going to have some company. That's right. This is sort of the news theme or the um, sort of TV news or platform theme of the week now. CBS is now releasing something called CBS All Access. It's its own online video on demand subscription service um, that doesn't require cable. And for $5.99 a month, you'll get a live stream of CBS uh, programming plus um, its trove of current and classic programming on demand. This obviously follows this trend um, that HBO started uh, in, when it made its HBO sort of standalone uh, platform news earlier this week. So now what's for interesting to me about this, uh, Elise, is that, of course, HBO announced this thing yesterday. The CEO did. Uh, there were actually two things interesting about this. Uh, the first is that HBO is a cable provider. They live through subscription fees. CBS is a network TV station. They were one of the original three. And they live completely on advertising, but now they're talking about collecting a monthly fee to provide. It's essentially a cable model delivered over the Internet. And, of course, you don't need a, a cable subscription, and that's what makes it super uh, uh, appealing. And um, the Wall Street Journal called this somewhat similar to Hulu, although it's cheaper than Hulu. Hulu, costs, Hulu Plus costs $7.99 a month. Uh, and they have 8 million subscribers. So it's a really interesting development, and I think we're going to get to the point where we can have a la carte um, television, essentially, without cable providers, and that's a pretty interesting prospect. And CBS does own Showtime, right? Because I'm really interested in some Showtime con uh, content. And Showtime also obviously does the same sort of HBO Go type model with Showtime anytime. And so I'm wondering um, or hopeful that this CBS News is a harbinger for perhaps Showtime to do the same thing as HBO did yesterday. Yeah. And, and the other interesting thing about this is, of course, that the Apple announcement is today. So HBO announced something yesterday. CBS announced something today. It kind of seems like they are preempting an announcement by Apple that these sorts of offerings will also be uh, offered through Apple TV. I'm just speculating there, and other people's are, people are speculating about this as well. Two other uh, quick factoids before we move on. There's no Sunday National Football League games. The league contracts bans this, so that so that's a that's a bummer. Mm -hmm. And yep. it's only going to be the live stream part of it is only going to be available in 14 markets where CBS owns stations, and so <laughs> it's not it's not universal. Uh, in terms of the live streaming, although the rest of the, their offerings, their downloadable content uh, is pretty universal as far as we know. Good caveats to know. Yeah. Well, Facebook announced a service that lets people tell family and friends that they're okay after a crisis or natural, nat natural disaster. It's called Safety Check, and it sends users a push notification after a disaster to those people whose phone locations indicate that they're in a disaster area. By pressing a button, those people can reply with the news that they're fine and that information is made available to others who care about them. Kurt Wagner writes about social media for Recode and joins us now. Welcome to you, Kurt. Hey, thanks for having me. So how do you use the system both as someone stuck in a disaster zone and also as a someone concerned about a loved one? Sure. Well, it's supposed to be incredibly simple. That's how uh, Facebook 
is intending it to work. But if you're in a disaster zone uh, and something happens, maybe an earthquake or, uh, you know, even something maybe more extreme like a tsunami or something like that, you would receive a push notification, as you said. Uh, you simply open it up and you can hey, you have two responses. You can either say, I'm fine or I'm not in the area. And then what that does is it kind of broadcasts that information to your friends on Facebook. So if you have loved ones or or relatives who are trying to make sure that uh, people in the area are okay, they can then do that. And you would be able to see a list of your friends who are in a certain disaster zone, and then you'd be able to scroll through the list and see which ones have checked in and, and said that they're safe and which ones still have not. Kurt, what's the origin of this idea? Why is Facebook getting into this sort of space? You know, they started uh, something actually similar a few years back. So after the 2011 um, earthquake and tsunami in Japan, a number of engineers at uh, Facebook's Japan office um, created some kind of a message board type thing for this specific purpose, um, but it was only local to Japan. And as Facebook evolved, that that product, that uh, message board kind of disappeared. And then a few, uh, about a year ago, I guess, a few engineers at their Menlo Park headquarters picked up the project and uh, said, you know, this is something that, that people use Facebook to have these kinds of check-ins all the time. Um, let's create some type of tool that makes it very easy and, and you know, prompts people to do it as well. Now, Kurt, is this already up and running and do you need a Facebook account to use it? So it is up and running as of today. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg actually announced the new product while visiting Japan um, on Thursday. And I'm told that it's now active for all of Facebook users. Uh, and you do need an account. So uh, in order to log in, it, the reason you need an account is because all the information is shared between friends. So it's not public information. So if I check in and say I'm OK, uh, only my friends are going to see that. So that's why you need an account. You need to be able to actually have some connections on Facebook in order to uh, really reap the benefits of this. Very quickly, what if you're not OK? That's a good question. And I asked them that. I said, uh, if I don't check in, is some you know alert going to be sent to the Red Cross or to local authorities to let them know that, that Kurt hasn't checked in? Maybe we need to start looking for them. And as of right now, they don't have any partnerships like that. Uh, they, like they, like I said, they really wanted to keep it just friends. So if you're not okay, if you're not checking in, hopefully your Facebook friends will see that and then either reach out to you and, and maybe you just haven't been on Facebook, or if they can't get a hold of you, hopefully they will look, uh, you know, contact authorities and and you know search for you or, or just verify that everything's okay. You can find Kurt Wagner at Recode.net and also on Twitter at Kurt Wagner eight. Thank you so much for joining us, Kurt Wagner. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. Just a sec. We have a couple of quick follow-ups. But first, I want to tell you about Squarespace. You want to sell something online. You want to have a blog. You want to raise money for a nonprofit. Squarespace is the perfect place to do it because it's so easy to use. It's so easy to use that it's actually fun to use. It's actually entertaining to use something that's this pleasurable. And it just ends up with a really, really beautiful website. They have incredible designs with their templates. Uh, so many to choose from. And also a logo creator tool. So if you're going to be selling something, you're going to launch a small business, or just want a logo for any reason whatsoever, you can create it with a logo tool without any experience as a designer. It's really fun to use for that reason. And of course, if you ever need help, they have really great tech support, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. E-commerce is available for all subscription plan levels, including the ability to accept donations. This is great for nonprofits, school fund drives, wedding registries, whatever you want to use it for. And it's inexpensive. Squarespace starts at just $8 a month, and that price includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. And it's mobile ready, too. You can manage your site with a mobile uh, with their free mobile app, and your viewers and, and, and audience will see your site in beautiful uh, native uh, design format on their mobile device, whether it's a phone, tablet, or whatever. There's absolutely no reason to not use Squarespace. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your website. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, just use the offer code TNT and that will get you 10% off the price and will also show your support for Tech News Today and we appreciate that. And we thank Squarespace for their support of Tech News Today. And remember that a better web awaits and it starts with your new Squarespace website. Well, bad news for people still using HP Touchpad and HP Pre-3 devices. HP has announced the end of support for WebOS. After January 15th, users will no longer be able to get updates, apps, lost passwords, or backups for WebOS. If you recall, mobile multi-touch operating system, um, WebOS was acquired by, the, acquired by HP as part of its $1.2 billion purchase of Palm Inc. in July of 2010. 
It's over, folks, although LG is still using the operating system, so it's unclear how that will be affected. Recode sources say Apple may stop selling Fitbit products in Apple stores. The move comes a month and a half after Apple announced its own alternative to Fitbit devices, the Apple Watch, and one week after Fitbit it issued a strange statement saying it was still in the process of, quote, evaluating integration with health HealthKit. Sounds like Fitbit and Apple are not getting along uh, over the competitive marketplace for the future of wearable fitness devices. At its peak, fitness claimed... Fitbit claimed 70% of the market share in the fitness tracking device market, but those days are over. Well, TNT fan of the day is Mikkel Venable of Pulaski, Tennessee, who posted this picture of himself on Twitter, catching up on Tech News Today while watching the sunset in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Wow, that looks really nice. <laughs> hey, and that's a nice second screen experience. Isn't it? Yeah, right. <laughs> the first screen being... Right. The, if the second screen is the sunset. Is exactly. reality. Yeah. Is re right. <laughs> reality was such high definition reality. Yeah. Uh, how do you watch or listen to TNT? Just record a video or take a picture of your setup and post it on Google Plus, Twitter, or Facebook. And use the hashtag how I watch TNT and we'll find it. That is the tech news today. Elise Hugh, thank you so much for joining us for this very brief and early uh, episode of Tech News Today. Always happy to be here, and um, you can always find me on Twitter at Elise WHO. Wonderful. Thanks again. Well, you Thanks, can guys. You can subscribe to Tech News Today on good old-fashioned RSS, a whole bunch of other options, too. Just choose your favorite at twit.tv slash TNT. Follow us on Twitter. Tech News Today TV is our Twitter name. Send us your thoughts and opinions via email to TNT at twit.tv or by phone, 260-TNT-SHOW. And don't miss our evening newscast, Tech News Tonight, at 4 p.m. Pacific tonight and every weeknight right here on the Twit Network. My name is Mike Elgin. Thanks for tuning in and stick around. Our special coverage of the live Apple event is coming up next.